Let it go. All right, this is just a brief video from our warm up from class. We got a boy on a merry go round with an initial velocity and radius. Before we get started, let's get our equations up here again. Centripetal acceleration is going to be defined as v squared divided by r. So ac equals v squared divided by r. And of course, force centripetal is equal to m v squared divided by r. Now I notice that we have an angular velocity given here. So for v squared, we are going to sub in the linear relationship v equals r omega. So when we sub r omega in for this, we're going to get r squared omega squared over r is equal to centripetal acceleration. Now, of course, I should make my r's both look like the same here. So we're going to get one r to cross off here. So centripetal acceleration is equal to r omega squared. So we can also use that equation okay for it. And of course, if we multiply this equation by mass, we'll have uh, centripetal acceleration. Okay, so our job is to find the boy's centripetal acceleration initially. I'm going to choose this equation here. So AC is going to equal R. His radius is 3.2. We'll multiply this by 0.75 squared. And that's going to give us uh, 1.8 meters per second squared. Now, I might be confused by how does that end up being meters per second squared? Well, this 3.2 is meters, and this 0.75 is reciprocal seconds. Remember, radians is not a real unit. And if you square that, that's 1 over second squared, and that's how you end up with that. Now, what about the centripetal force? Well, centripetal force, then, would equal the mass, 40 for the boy, multiplied by acceleration, just like all forces are mass times acceleration. And that equals 72 newtons of force. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now, let's go on to the next part. If the coefficient of friction between the boy's shoes and the merry-go-round is 0.31, what's the maximum linear speed the boy can go? without sliding. Well, we now know that force centripetal is equal to force of friction. The friction between the boy's shoes is what's making him go to the center of the circle. So if we just simply write this out and solve for V, we can find its velocity. So then we know the boy's mass is 40. So 40 times V squared uh, divided by his radius is 3.2. That's going to equal friction. Well, that would be equal mass, which is 40. We multiply that times 9.8. And then I'm going to have to put mu down here. So imagine we're multiplying by 0.31 down here also. Okay, so 0.31. Now when we find velocity, we can actually cross off our masses here. And our velocity, okay, it turns out to be 3.1 meters per second. <clears throat> So that's how you would figure that out. So he can go 3.1 meters per second in a linear sense, okay, without falling off. Now the last one, find the coefficient of friction in order to allow the boy to rotate at 1.6 rads per second. So one more time, we're going to see that force centripetal is equal to force of friction. Now since this is 1.6 radians per second squared, I'm going to choose AC equals R omega squared and multiply that by mass. So it's going to be 40 for force centripetal, 40, his mass. I'll multiply that, okay, by the radius of 3.2. And then I'll take that times 1.6 squared is equal to 40 times 9.8 and then multiply that by mu. Okay, and again, the 40s will cross off. Then we can solve for mu. And mu, that turns out to equal 0.84. Okay, so that's our warm-up from today. Nothing too major there at all, just looking at some typical acceleration and force.